Hello, welcome back little ones, welcome back family members, glad you all can make it back. I love you all with the love of the Lord, we'll get right into prayer, hallelujah. We waited another day, glory be to God. Good morning, our Heavenly Father, we say thank you. We come to you to say thank you, give you thanks for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We say thank you for waking us up this morning to another glorious day that you made. We are rejoicing, be glad in it, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Chance to get it right. If we got it wrong, got a chance to get it right. Hallelujah. Another new day. Hallelujah. It's one day at a time, sweet Jesus. One day at a time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for waking us up. Thank you for your uh, love. Thank you for your love towards your children. Thank you for keeping us and not forsaking us. Thank you for your outstretched arm, Father God. You are the Almighty, the one and only, the true God. Thy name is faithful and true. Faithful and true. Glory be to God. We know we can count on you. We lean not to our own understanding, but acknowledge you in all thy ways, Father God. So you may direct our paths, and we thank you. Thank you, Father God. You being the one and only true God, the almighty, majestic in all your ways, holy, pure, and righteous. Glory be to God. Thank you for all that you do have done and will do, Father God. Thank you for our family members, our loved ones, strangers, and enemies for that matter. Thank you, Father God, for... A head of protection around our family members and our loved ones and those in the body of Christ, the listeners. We just thank you, Father God. We're so very grateful. And we plead the blood of Jesus over our family members, our loved ones, and a head of protect. And uh, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners and those in the body of Christ. May we all love the Lord today. May we all strive for holiness today as every day. And Love one another. May we love one another with pure love like you love us, Father God. And may we forgive one another as you've forgiven us through our faults and our transgressions. So shall we for our fellow man. Love. May we all love. Forgive. Not only forgive, but forget. Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And help us, Lord God, to guide our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. Because evil's waiting to pounce, so we will not let him in. Hallelujah. No place and no space for us in him. None. None. No place or space in us for him. None. Let me make sure that is corrected. And I'm saying it again. No place or space in us for him. He's not welcome. The evil one's not welcome. These are holy temples. A holy, pure, righteous, knowing no sin life was given for us to have life. So our life don't belong to us. And our vessels are holy, because our Father which are in heaven is holy. Glory be to God. In fact, we're not even from here. We live here, but this is temporary. We're basically passing through. It's for, for a short time. Come on. We're going home. Hallelujah. We're going home to live with King Jesus. We're not from here. We, we live here temporary, but we're not from here. We have a home. Our home is in the heavenly kingdom with our heavenly Father. And that's where we belong. Not here. We're here for a period of time. Glory be to God. And, uh, Father God, we thank you for your holy angels that watch over us each and every day, all day, even while we work and play and while we are rest. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, for remission of our sins, paid in full. But we know we need to work our own salvation in fear and trembling of the Most High. And we thank Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life freely. You could have taken it back at any time. We earned absolutely nothing. But there's no greater gift than for a man to lay down his life for a friend. Thank you, friend. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit that guides us to all truth. And walks with us, talks with us, teaches us. But the words in our mouth, we don't know what to say or how to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And also known as a comforter. Thank you, comforter. Hallelujah. And Father God, we can't say thank you enough. As we go through this day, help us, Lord God, to do what is right. To strive for holiness and holiness only. May we be mindful of everyone that we come in contact with, that we show them love, that we be a, a, a shining light that honors you, Father, that is a reflection of you. May our light so shine that it glorify our Father, which are in heaven. May we glorify you, Father, and don't be a stink in your nostrils or grieve you. Glory be to God. We thank you, Father God. We can't say thank you enough. We're grateful to you and for you. We're grateful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you, we exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise our holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. 
We glorify that holy name to God, be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belongs to you and only you, Father God. We say, use us for your glory and your glory alone. And we love you with an everlasting love and we'll never forsake you. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But that being said, we don't stop there. Hallelujah. If you haven't given your life to Christ, what are you waiting for? Now's the time. Don't wait another minute. Don't wait another second. Let's get it right. Have you heard the G have you heard the news? Hallelujah. The news is Jesus Christ. He is coming back. Jesus is coming back for a spotless, blameless, unblemished bride. If you are ready to do what is right and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this prayer. And not only say this prayer, but mean it from your heart. Mean it with your heart that you will accept him into your life to be your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you died on the cross and shed your holy sinless blood and was risen from the dead three days later after being crucified. Help me to seek eternal life, live a life of holiness, a life pleasing and acceptable to you. Help me to study your word and obey it and repent daily. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, you are to now begin to read your word. Read your word daily. Go down on your knees in prayer to the Father. Pray out. Cry out to him. Seek his face. Seek him. You'll find him. If you seek him in sincerity and truth with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you shall find him. Now you ought to be, please repent for your sins. Please repent for your sins. That means you're going to repent or be sorry for what you've done. Repent now. That means to return from your wicked ways. You're not going to do them anymore. We're not living a life of sin. You're striving for holiness now. You're going to be a new being in Christ. He's going to work on you. The Lord is going to work on you. From where you are now, he's going to work on you. But that's your relation, a personal relationship. Then, by the way, you're going to repent, and then you're going to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, you're going to repent. That means turn from your wicked ways. Be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations. And uh, in your walk, congratulations, and God bless you in your walk with Christ. Remember this walk. Is a personal relationship. It's not a religion. It's a personal re relationship between you and the Father. Personal. Okay? It's a commitment and love between you and the Father. He deals with us all individually. And He loves us all. Alright? He loves us all. But He loves you. But He, but he also know You also know that you have uh, free will. You have free will. I'm talking to those that have not been saved. Those that have been served, congratulations. Congratulations, my new brother and sister in the body of Christ. Congratulations to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And may we in the body of Christ welcome you, pray with you, pray without fasting. I mean, pray without ceasing. Excuse me, Lord. Satan, get thee behind me. Get thee behind me, Satan. Pray. Pray without ceasing. Fast, bear one another's burdens, and love and charity as they cover a multitude of sin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And um, yes, you're going to be a new being in Christ. It's a personal relationship between you and the Father, not a religion. And he'll work on you. He'll do the changes himself. Okay, he'll, you'll learn how he speaks to you because he speaks to us all individually. And for those that have not given your life to Christ, I pray that you do. I don't know what we're waiting for. 
It's just like in the days of Noah when they had the uh, ark was closed and the people didn't accept it. Then when the doors closed, they want to come running. Got drowned. All of them got drowned. But know this. Whatever door, a door that the Lord shut it, it cannot be opened. Not by man, not by the hands of man. And every the door, whatever door the, the Lord opened it, no man can shut. So, you know, don't let the door shut on you. And don't let your free will cause you to perish. I say that. Do not let your free will cause you to perish. Don't wake up with your eyes. Open up your eyes in, in uh, hell. Let's do what's right. Let's receive the Lord now. Let's live a life of holiness while you have time. We're going right. With that being said, I love you all with the love of the Lord. I love you all with the love of the Lord. We are on, uh, the Father gives me Proverbs. And obviously there's a message he wants to go forth. Because I believe he gave me this the other day as well. Proverbs 15, 16, and 17. Chapter 15, 16, and 17. I'm going to begin to read. Proverbs chapter 15. A salt answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge of right, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach of the spirit. A fool despises his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. In the house of the righteous is much treasure, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. The lips of the wise is first knowledge, but the heart of the foolish doeth not so. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord, how much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go unto the, unto the wise. A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge, but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. A wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. The way of the slothful man is an hedge of thorns, but the way of the righteous is made plain. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him that is destitute of wisdom, but a man of understanding walketh uprightly. Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in a multitude of counselors they are established. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season, how good is it. The way of life is above to the wise, that he may depart from hell beneath. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house, but he that hateth gifts shall live. The heart of the righteous studieth to answer, but the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart, and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is in the instruction of wisdom, and before humor, I mean, excuse me, Lord, and before honor is humility. Go again with that one. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Chapter 16. The preparations of, of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart 
is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king, his mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's, all the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is, the, is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth, and added learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health, and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A fraud man soweth strife, and a whisperer separated chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise fraud things. Moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth the spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Chapter 17 Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causeth shame, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. The finding pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tried the hearts. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor, reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Excellent speech becometh not a fool, much less do lying lips a prince. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it did turn it, it prospereth. He that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth a matter separateth very friends. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. An evil man seeketh only rebellion, therefore cruel messengers shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. Whoso regarded, whoso rewarded evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. Go again. Whoso rewarded evil for good, evil shall not depart from his house. The beginning of strife is as when one let it out water. Therefore, leave off contention before it be meddled with. He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are abomination to the Lord. Wherefore, is there a price in the hand of a fool to get wisdom, seeing he hath no heart to it? A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A man void of understanding striketh hands, and becometh surety in the presence of his friend. He loveth transgression that loveth strife, and he that exalted his gate seeketh destruction. He that hath a fraud heart findeth no good, and he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. He that begetteth a fool doeth it to his sorrow. 
and the father of a fool hath no joy. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A wicked man taketh the gift out of the bosom to pervert the ways of judgment. Wisdom is before him that hath understanding, but the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. A foolish son is a grief to his father, and bitterness to her that bear him. Also to punish the just is not good, nor to strike princes for equity. He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Amen? We know that, watch our mouth, what comes out of it. Watch what we, how we think. That's why we say, God, our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times. You know? But as a fool think it, that's what he is. If you man, if a man think, you know, this that way, that's exactly what he is. So you gotta be careful. Be careful what goes into your ears, what goes into your eyes, what you're taking in, who you listen to, the company you keep as well. So that being said, we're now we're still in the book of Numbers on our regular reading, and we're on chapter 18, the duties of the priests and Levites. Chapter 18, the duties of the priests and Levites. The Lord said to Aaron, you and your sons and the other Levites of the Koath clan are responsible for what happens at the sacred tent. And you and your sons will be responsible for what the priests do. The Levites are your relatives and are here to help you in your service at the tent. You must see that they perform their duties. But if they go near any of the sacred objects or the altar, all of you will die. No one else is, is allowed to take care of the sacred tent or to do anything connected with it. Follow these instructions so I won't become angry and punish the Israelites ever again. I alone chose the Levites from all the other tribes to belong to me, and I have given them to you as your helpers. But only you and your sons can serve as priests at the altar and in the most holy place. Your work as priests is a gift from me. And anyone else who tries to do that must, do that work must be put to death. The Lord said to Aaron, I have put you in charge of the sacred gifts and sacrifices that the Israelites bring to me. And from now on, you, your sons, and your descendants will receive part of the sacrifices for sin, as well as part of the grain sacrifices and the sacrifices to make things right. Your share of these sacrifices will be the parts not burned on the altar. Since these things are sacred, they must be eaten near the sacred tent, but only men are allowed to eat them. You will also receive part of the special gifts and offerings that the Israelites bring to me. Any member of your family who is clean and acceptable for worship can eat these things. For example, when the Israelites bring me the first batches of oil, wine, and grain, you can have the best parts of those gifts. And the first part of the crops from their fields and vineyards also belongs to you. The people will offer this to me then anyone in your family who is clean may have some of it. Everything in Israel that has been completely dedicated to me will now belong to you. The firstborn son in every Israelite family, as well as the firstborn males of their flocks and herds, and herds, herds, belong to me. But a firstborn son and every firstborn donkey must be brought back from me. The price for the firstborn son, who is at least one month old, will be five pieces of silver, weighed according to the official standards. However, all firstborn cattle, sheep, and goats belong to me and cannot be brought back. Splatter their blood on the altar and send their fat up in smoke so I can smell it and be pleased. You are allowed to eat the meat of those animals just as you can eat the choice ribs and the right hind leg of the special sacrifices. From now on, the sacred offerings that the Israelites give to me will belong to you, your sons, and your daughters. This is my promise to you and your descendants, and will never change. You will not receive any land in Israel as your own. I am the Lord, and I will give you whatever you need. The Lord said to Aaron, Ten percent of the Israelites' crops, and one out of every ten of their, new, of their newborn animals, belong to me. But I am giving all this to the Levites as they pay for the work they do at the sacred tent. They are the only ones allowed to work at the tent and they must not let anyone else come near it. Those who do must be put to death, and the Levites will also be punished. This law will never change. 
Since the Levites won't be given any land in Israel as their own, they will be given the crops and newborn animals that the Israelites offer to me. The Lord told Moses to say to the Levites, When you receive from the people of Israel 10% of their crops and newborn animals, you must offer a tenth of that to me, just as the Israelites give me part of their grain and wine. You must set aside part of what you receive as an offering to me. That amount must then be given to Aaron, so the best of what you receive will be mine. After you have dedicated the best parts to me, you can eat the rest, just as the Israelites eat part of their grain and wine after offering them to me. Your share may be eaten anywhere by anyone in your family, because it is your pay for working at the sacred tent. You won't be punished for eating it, as long as you have already offered the best parts to me. The gifts and sacrifices brought by the people must remain sacred. And if any eat any part of them before they are offered to me, you will be put to death. Mm. Wow. Well, God's willing, tomorrow is chapter 19. We'll come back to chapter 19 of Numbers, the book of Numbers. The ceremony to wash away sin. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God bless you. You all have yourself a beautifully blessed day. Tell your loved ones that you love them. Tell them that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow. Love everybody with the love of the Lord. Uh, pray for people that come up against you. Remember, we're not rendering evil for evil. Somebody do wrong to you, forgive them. Not only forgive, but forget and move forward from there. Right? And uh, parents, please lift your children up in prayer. Lift your children up in prayer. Lift them up to the Most High. He loved them. They're his children. Lift them up to him. Cover them. And cover them with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. I think we'll go out with um, this little light of mine. Yeah. Because we have to let our light so shine that it glorify our Father which art in heaven. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. God bless you. I love you all. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Whoa, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, whoa, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your light so shine that it glorify our Father which art in heaven. For all the glory, honor, and praise belong to you and only you, Father God. We say thank you. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Bye, little ones. Bye, family members. I love you all with the love of the Lord. God loves us more. God bless you. Bye-bye.